insects, the most diverse group of animals in the world. But did you know that many of the insects we see flying around today actually spend most of their lives underwater? In fact, without aquatic insects, we wouldn't have fish, frogs, or birds in our streams. Scientists actually use aquatic insects to help tell if a stream is healthy or not. Today we're going to explore the complex life cycles, the crazy adaptations, the ferocious predators, and the importance of this world of insects that lives under the stream's surface. You've seen these speedy insects zooming around during the summer, but have you ever wondered where they come from? Believe it or not, many of these insects spend several years underwater before emerging as adults. Caddisfly larvae live in little cases they make to disguise themselves. They make these cases out of things like sticky spit that they produce, little pebbles, twigs, and leaves. This way, they're super camouflaged. When caddisflies are ready to turn into adults, they seal their case closed like the cocoon of a butterfly. Just like fish have gills to get oxygen from the water, some insects have gills as well. Some of these insects have external gills. This means that their gills are on the outside of their body, just like on this caddisfly larva. The water in the stream flows over their gills so the insects can get oxygen to breathe. However, some aquatic insects have internal gills, like dragonflies. See their large abdomen? That's where their gills are. Dragonflies will suck in water from their abdomen so they can get fresh water to breathe. Not all aquatic insects use gills to survive underwater. Some aquatic insects, like the bellostomatids, also known as the toe biters, spend their entire lives underwater. These insects can get as big as five inches wide. That's bigger than the width of your hand. To survive, they actually have tubes that come out of their abdomen to let them breathe, just like a snorkel. This way, they can keep their body and eggs underwater while still breathing from the surface. Animals, like us and these insects, have to eat other things like plants and other animals to get their energy. If we start to draw lines that connect the energy flow in the stream, we can develop the stream's food chain. The sun gives energy to the plants. The caddisflies eat the plants. The dragonflies will eat the caddisflies. The fish will eat the dragonflies. And then the birds can eat the fish. That's the stream food chain. If you'll notice, everything in the food chain is connected. This means that if something goes wrong with one part of the food chain, it affects everything else. So what if pollutants get in our stream? Trash, pesticides, and fertilizers can all harm our streams and their inhabitants. Imagine that a nasty chemical washed from a nearby factory into the stream. Once a chemical is in the water, it gets into the plants. When the caddisflies eat the plants, they get contaminated. This causes the dragonflies to get contaminated when they eat the caddisflies, followed by the fish, then the birds, and eventually all the animals in the stream are contaminated. Do you notice something else? As the pollutant moves up the food chain, the animals have higher and higher concentrations of the pollutant. This is called bioaccumulation. It's a big word, but it means the higher an animal is in the food chain, the more pollutants it's likely to get. A lot of times, the pollutants get so concentrated that the animals at the top of the food chain, like birds or big fish, will get sick. Because pollutants can have such bad consequences, it's important to monitor streams to make sure they're healthy. Aquatic insects help determine if a stream is healthy. Scientists first need to catch the insects and then determine what they've found. The type of insects they find will help determine if the stream is healthy. The best part is you can be a scientist too and study your local streams. Let's see what sorts of things we might find. You can grab a net or just start turning over rocks. There are often lots of critters in the shallow, fast-flowing, rocky parts of streams. When scientists study streams, they have a special system for collecting insects. They put a net down in the water and kick around the rocks in front of the net. Any insects on these rocks get swept directly into the net. Let's see what we found. We can use this field guide to help identify things. Check out this crane fly larva. You can immediately recognize it because it looks like a large grub with tentacles on its head. These guys are really important for eating all the leaves that fall in the stream. And be sure to go explore a stream soon. Who knows what you'll find.